Welcome to Women Winning Divorce. I am your host, Heather Quick. I am an attorney, entrepreneur, author, and founder of Florida Women's Law Group, the only divorce firm for women by women. I love thinking big, thinking outside the box, creating creative solutions for women, and empowering women to win in all aspects of their life. Our approach at Florida Women's Law Group is to provide women with a strategy to not only achieve their objectives, but win at life. I believe that what may show up as adversity is simply an opportunity to change and improve your life. In each episode, I sit down with innovative professionals and leaders who are focused on how you can be your best self before, during, and after divorce. In these conversations, we are looking at how women can win at life. I have the unique opportunity to meet women when they are at a transition period of life, but that is only the beginning to becoming your best self and winning at life on your terms. With our guests, we enjoy the opportunity to explore ways all women can win and enhance their life, no matter where they are in their journey, because divorce is just a point in life, not the end and not what defines you, rather a catalyst for your growth. Are you facing the challenges of divorce and feeling overwhelmed? Introducing Divorce 101, your essential online course designed to empower you through the divorce process. I'm Heather Quick, attorney and CEO at Florida Women's Law Group. Gain confidence and clarity with expert guidance on legalities, financial considerations, and your emotional well-being. We believe in empowering you to navigate this journey with strength and knowledge. Enroll in Divorce 101 today and take control of your future. As a valued podcast listener, you will get $100 off the course. So please see the show notes for the promo code and the link. You can also find out more at floridawomenslawgroup.com or always call us at 904-567-0121. Divorce for women, by women. Welcome to this week's episode of Women Winning Divorce. I'm Heather Quick, owner and attorney at Florida Women's Law Group. Today, I'm joined by Rebecca Palmer. Rebecca is the owner of Rebecca L. Palmer Law Group in Orlando, Florida. We're going to be discussing alimony, VIP clients, and high net worth divorce today. Rebecca is joining us for the second time. So she is an encore guest. I think that. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. <laughs> yes. um, so welcome back, Rebecca. Great to be back. Thank you very much for having me. Well, um, it's great. I love having attorneys as guests. Um, I'm so biased towards that. And even more so family law attorneys, because, you know, we speak the same language and I think it really helps out our clients. Absolutely. So um, obviously you were on the podcast before and for our listeners, that's episode 77. But um, Rebecca, can you just have, for our listeners who haven't heard that show, tell us a little bit about, you know, how you got to where you are now and in and, and regards certainly to family law. Absolutely. Well, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm almost to, going to celebrate my 30th anniversary of practicing law um, in September. And so I've been doing it decades, literally, at this point. Um, I didn't even take family law in law school. I had I wasn't interested in it. Um, you know, I, I thought many times how I just got a bug for it. And uh, I love it, love it, love it. And I just, I, part of me thinks it might have been because my dad was a, a, a minister and maybe watching him help people uh, as part of it. Part of it, I think, is uh, my eldest brother went through a divorce and it, it, they get along so well. It, it, it went really well and I liked the way that went. Um, and because I, I'm, I'm a litigator, you know, I, I go to court, but I've learned that's not necessarily what you should do in family law when possible, you know, mediation. Now we have collaborative law and the like. So it was a journey. I was at a large law firm, uh, and just finally decided to stick my neck out there because they, they didn't do family law and say, this is what I want to do. Period. Paragraph. You know, I don't want to be a jack of all trades. I don't want to do insurance. I don't want to do corporate work. I really like helping individuals. And um, I know exactly how long ago it was when they finally said, yes, you can do family law and have your own team. It was like a little firm within a large firm. And I was on maternity leave <laughs> <laughs> with my large, my oldest uh, uh, child. She is uh, in, in college now and she's 21. So that's how I know 
when I really went all in. And I had written memos to the president of the firm saying that I really thought it's what I wanted to do and why it would work at a large firm. Because at the time, large firms weren't really doing family law. And um, it was it was a great fit. Um, then when I was approaching my 50s, which I'm now well into them, um, I said, if I don't ever, I've always wanted my own firm. And if I don't do this before I'm 50, <laughs> I'm never going to do it. So I'm really thankful at the large firm. I got to run a team because I knew exactly what I needed. I knew how many attorneys I needed. I, I knew how to kind of run a little firm within a big firm. So mm -hmm. that's how I kind of got there. Just true desire and, and passion for that, that practice. That is, um, and that's awesome. And it's truly makes a difference for your clients when you have the passion to help them through their family law issues. And, you know, what would you, how would you distinguish your firm now? Like for our listeners, you know, what, what's your philosophy in, in helping folks in family law? You know, first of all, make sure you're the most prepared person in the room, <laughs> you know, and uh, by that, whether it's court or mediation or collaborative or what process you're going through, think of the end game and where you want to go and make sure you've had really good discussions with your client and your attorney uh, about what you want and where your priorities are. I think that has to be a true focus and never walk into a room not prepared. Absolutely. And because I know with your decades of experience, as well as mine, because we've seen the others, we've seen the ones, the attorneys right. who aren't prepared and right. It never really bodes well for them. It's just quite it, apparent. And it's interesting, too, because I'm also a mediator. And when I see people come in, I can tell who prepared their client and who didn't, you know, and it's 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 really unfortunate, um, you know, to try to have everybody communicating, meet with your client, always have a mediation preparation, always have hearing preparations. We would even set up like a, a mock uh, trial room if there was going to be going to court. So you kind of mm -hmm. understood how to testify and go over your questions. Um, it's it's nerve wracking to go to court. The last thing you want to do is not feel like, okay, I kind of know what's going to happen here. Um, you don't want anybody cold. Absolutely. And that's great because preparation is the key. And I think that I've always found, you know, when you are in front of somebody or, you know, you watch whether it's a presentation, anything, the better they are is because they are so well prepared that it looks as if it's so very natural. But the preparation is so key, in, I think, in litigation and in representation of clients, for sure. Well, it's it's interesting because, you know, I would want, uh, I, I try to do what I would want if I was going through a divorce. Yes. You know, I try to do that for my clients. And, and a lot of that's being understanding what's going on and not using all the legal lingo, so to speak, you know, like just today I was talking to somebody, a client about a petition for modification. They don't know what that is. So, you know, I pause and say, that's like a brand new loss. You know, you explain it in, in plain English so yes. that it's not a foreign concept um, at all. And, you know, it, it shocks me how many people do go to a negotiation and haven't prepared an agreement and gone over mm -hmm. with the client. I'm certain that if I was sitting in a divorce no negotiation and I was the client, I could barely read, <laughs> let alone <laughs> read a page, 30 page document that settles everything in my life. <laughs> my exactly. money, my kids, you know, everything. No, thank you. I want to be prepared. Absolutely. Now, um, we have a lot on the, on the plate as far as our title today, um, quite a few topics, but I'd like to start basic for our listeners. Um, how would you define a celebrity divorce? Well, I definitely had a few um, notable ones. Um, you know, Jeff and Brooke Gordon, um, Tiger Woods and Elon. Elon was my client. She's now Elon Nordigan. Um, and, I, you know, I, and others, I could say baseball players and basketball players, et cetera. Um, musicians, actors, actresses, but it's so different. Mm -hmm. And in the regard that these folks, all eyes are on them. 
while they're going through this traumatic experience. <laughs> and right, right. I would literally stand in the grocery line and look at the tabloids and go, well, it's close, but you missed this fact. And you know, I'd say that in my brain, you know, be like close. And I was uh -huh. talking to your team member about um, how careful you got to be. In Elon's case and Tiger's case, um, I had to sign a confidentiality so much so that I would be personal li personally liable as well as my firm if I said anything about the case. Mm -hmm. It was not until uh, we flew on a jet to go to the final hearing, it wasn't until we landed that it was announced that I was the attorney. And most of the people in my firm, only a handful of people even knew, and there's over 300 employees there, knew that I was even on that case. I mean, that's how careful. Mm -hmm you know, I needed to be. Well, and that's an interesting thing. So for, for a celebrity, that's a public figure, obviously, um, because there's really, I mean, I think you can talk in generalities, but that's a big, big thing, correct? The confidentiality more so than your oh. regular person. Cause that's how they make their living. I would say I try to treat every client with confidentiality being now number one, you know, if, if, they don't want it known. I'm not telling it. Right. right. But I mean, it, it, literally, I, I used to delete my deleted emails. That's how careful. And mm -hmm. uh, one interesting story, Heather, is it was a Tiger and Elon's um, final hearing happened to be on the first day of school. And my kids were still very young at the time. And I couldn't tell my kids why I couldn't take them first day of school. Right. You no, know, it was just like. Ah, luckily, thankful uh, that Elon delayed the plane and I was able to take them and then get on the plane mm -hmm. and go to the hearing. But um, I mean, that's how cautious we had to be. And my mm -hmm. firm didn't know. Um, a handful of my firm knew that I was doing the case. And the day that we did the final hearing is when my firm announced that that I had done that representation. I mean, that's unusual <laughs> to have Fair, to go yeah. to those lengths. I mean, I'd say confidentiality is always really important, but they didn't even want them, anyone to know I was on the case until it was over. Uh, and that's, you know, I, I, I know you weren't, well, I don't know if you were on this case because the confidentiality, I don't know, but um, <laughs> you know, like um, Tom Brady and Giselle, right. I think it hit the news that it was over. Right. And everything had been negotiated and that was very, very well done as well. Seems like very much an example of, you know, keeping it quiet so that they could do what they needed to do until it had to be public, which obviously there's a lot that goes into it clearly for the participants, but that would be the ideal situation if you're, in the public eye, is that, would you say so? That's absolutely true. And and that's pretty much what happened with Tiger and Elon. You know, it wasn't announced that I was even on the case until the final hearing was done. Mm -hmm. And we were in a situation where uh, we filed, I cannot tell you where, we filed in an obscure place so nobody could find the public pleadings. Mm -hmm. um, so it took some extra steps to think, okay, how do we really keep this confidential? Mm -hmm. um, you know, inevitably there's leaks somewhere by someone, um, but I'm, I'm, it wasn't us. <laughs> right. You, right. And I don't want to be responsible for that or liable for that. Now, when we, you know, as part of one of the things we're going to talk about today also are high asset divorces. So for our listeners, you know, what would you define that as? Like, you know, somebody's listening, they're like, I wonder if I have high assets or what does that mean? Or, you know, could you elaborate for we, us on that? Absolutely. We used to call it a, you know, substantiality, you know, the test where, you know, what kind of happens is, um, first of all, I don't do free consultations, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and that, that would not be a high asset case. And um, I spend over two hours with my clients when I first meet with them. And they get a large notebook from me uh, about the law and the facts. And so it, it high asset to me is, you know, there's a lot of money at stake for whatever reason. And mm -hmm. every case is high importance, but the yes. high assets, I mean, 
you know, I, I, I hate to put a number on it, but you're definitely dealing in the millions, you know, so. Um, and with businesses or like more different varied right. investments, possibly. Um, Absolutely, Heather, you're right. In, investments, um, more complicated financial situations. Um, certainly with business, businesses, then you hire somebody else too to help you called forensic accountant who helps you with that part of it. And, you know, oftentimes I know that we've had cases that, um, you know, there's been money earned internationally. So sometimes maybe holdings are international. So it's just like, I think would say maybe it's just layers upon layers that then that make it more of a complex case. Obviously, high asset equals more money, but also more complex, not just sitting in one account in a bank. Absolutely. I did. Um... At the time, it was the was one of the only international relocation cases. Uh, my client had raised her kids here in Orlando and wanted to move to London with the children. And so there's something called a guardian ad litem. We call them GALs, and they look after the children and give testimony as to them. We flew our guardian ad litem to London. You know, we, we got a school expert to look at, you know, local schools versus the schools in London that the kids could attend. We looked at the dynamics of uh, their backgrounds and, you know, what the population that was similar in Orlando versus London to their backgrounds, much more similar in London than Orlando. And so a, a lot, I, I definitely would call that a complex case. It was a two week trial, which is unusual mm -hmm. in family law. One whole week was just on the kids and one whole week was just on the money. And and there was travel involved. There were there were potentially assets uh, all the way to India. <laughs> so there was a lot going on. Mm -hmm. And that is yeah. It just means that I, I I think it's the more layers takes more experts or at least a expert with that type of experience to really dig into it so that you know that our clients are properly represented absolutely and then the nice thing of having done cases like that i have learned so much even to like apply them to my own family you know i jokingly say i was a decent lawyer when i was single i was better once i was married and now it's even better once i had kids now i have a new phrase and i say even better because i have adult kids because even that's complicated issues mm -hmm. what you really can get help with in the law and can't with adult kids um Knock on wood, I'm not divorced, but but the other layers have really helped me. My personal life has helped me, my professional life. I have to say that for sure. Now, let's talk a little bit about, you know, we're dealing with, say, you know, a complex asset, you know, a lot of money involved. And, um, you know, how, how are different ways that alimony are looked at, um, you know, when you have, you know, a higher asset case? Well, it, it's interesting, you know, in Florida, uh, alimony laws changed pretty dramatically, as did parenting issues changed pretty, pretty dramatically this past summer um, in July. And lingo's changed. Uh, it, it, it's very different. Um, but you got you to gotta look at the big picture because you could be talking about a little bit of money, but they really someone really needs that money or you could be taking about a ton of money. And you've got to personally take yourself out of that, whether it's a lot or a little, you know, it's what is the person's need? You know, what is the ability to pay the person's ability to pay? And what does that look like? And um, literally you got to ignore how many zeros there are um, because that's not the issue. It's, it's what's best for this situation. Now, have you found um, in those higher asset cases that, Oftentimes, even though there it would suggest there's an alimony case, um, sometimes once you've divided the property and the assets, sometimes there is income that is produced off that that can, you know, at least supplement what normally would have been an alim alimony number. Absolutely, Heather. You know, it, so we generally use 4%. Um, it's pretty accepted. 
So if you get X amount of dollars, well, what kind of for, for the 4% going to bring in? That's okay. absolutely looked at. So that's why we do the acronym of PEACE. You do parenting first to see who's going to have the kids. Then you do equal distribution, fancy phrase for dividing everything up, the assets and the debts. Then you do alimony because each one of these things affects the other. Then you do mm-hmm. child support and then you talk about everything else. So it, it, there's, there's a method to the madness um, in that you're spot on that an equal distribution situation the division of the assets and debts could change what the alimony looks like. But, and, but, but I will tell you, I just, another case came to my mind that I had a very high end equal distribution case. And so they were arguing, the other side was arguing she shouldn't get any alimony in that case. And we're like, no, because you also don't have to dip into your assets. So two different things. If you get a very high valuable asset, but it's not generating any income, you nailed it there, Heather, when you said generating income, because that's the issue. Are, are mm-hmm. you getting money from the asset? Not that you have any, you know, Bentley, <laughs> that's, that's not going to produce you any money, um, you know, but you got some cash that can Right. And, you know, that was interesting. We've done that before too, the 4%, but I think that's really important because um, the courts are, and the law does expect you. And that's hard to understand. I think even with, you know, just because there's a lot of assets, a lot of things to be divided does not mean that the clients always understand. And, um, let me, I'm going to pose the question, right? That yeah. I think a client would. So they would say, you know, well, Rebecca, okay, you're saying I'm getting, say I'm getting half everything. It's all marital. And now the court's going to say, I'm going to get the 4% return on it for my income. Um, rather than maybe, you know, I wanted that reinvested because my husband, he doesn't get on his bottom line accounted for, that return on his income, he can, you know, reinvest it and use it to become, to increase his wealth. What would you, what would your answer be to that, to that client? I think your question is the answer. Um, <laughs> you know, in that it, 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 you know, it, it's inequitable. You know, family law is a court of equity. And to, to say, okay, you guys got this much. And, and that's exactly the case that came to my mind when we were talking a moment ago. In that, you know, yes, she got a lot. She got a lot, or he got a lot, whatever it mm-hmm. is. But that doesn't mean they have to dip into it, or it doesn't seem quote unquote terrible word to use in family law fair, but true. Yes. But <laughs> it, does, it doesn't seem right. Doesn't seem right. You know, um, you know, I had a case just yesterday where, and I encourage people who may be going through a divorce. Don't put the value of who you are or what your marriage is worth on whatever the settlement is. I mean, I, I sometimes have to explain that to clients because they're like, wait, we were married for 20 some years mm-hmm. and it's only worth X to me a month. Or wait a minute, we're married, you know, 20 years and I have to pay what a month, <laughs> you know, whatever the answer may be. So looking at both perspectives. But that's not the people's value. You know, it's yeah. it's more looking at the whole picture and the law of what can happen. But I, I, I will say, I mean, I, I mentioned earlier, the adult kids thing, I, I don't think people have their arms completely wrapped around because in Florida, basically after 18, unless you agree otherwise, the financial responsibility goes away. When, we all know, those are the most expensive years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when you're looking at college. And so it's, like I said, I think my personal life helps me understand my clients going through that. I um, I know, right? Isn't it crazy that the law, and I, I hate to get too like carried away on that, but okay, until they're 18 or graduate college. Okay, yeah. So on May 15th, when they graduate, what? Are they not still living in your house? Are you not still feeding them, clothing them? And like no transition no. period at I, all. 
I, I, in my heart of hearts, if I, if I don't want to be in politics at all. I used to want to be the more mayor of Orlando when I've, <laughs> what, before I had children. So over 20 years ago, I don't want to be in politics. But if I was in a, a position to lobby or do something, I think that's an issue that has to be looked at. Because the idea that they're off your, your, your kids don't need any financial help after 18 is ludicrous. Um, it, it really is. And I, I am not, I'm going to vote for you, Rebecca, if I can. <laughs> so I am <laughs> because you're sweet, Heather. <laughs> it, um, other states are so different. And, and it's just like you said, you know, as you, as you have that own life experience of children, and then you think, wow, this is, um, this seems ridiculous. Like that day it's over. And yet, oh my gosh, right after graduating high school, it's like, there's, there's still so much to be done. If, you know, their path is to go to college or to some kind of schooling and like, they don't go immediately. And then, and what I really hate for our clients, for my clients in particular, when I have had these experiences is the, the mom, cause obviously we were, were uh, represent women only and she's just like, and he said, he just tells them, no, I'm not doing it. So I know it's coming out of my alimony or my assets. And, you know, this is shared, right? We're not just kicking him out the door or her out the door. Go get a job and figure it out. It it just doesn't seem realistic and to coincide with it's not. what most families are doing, what most families do. Right. No, I agree with you 100%. I, it's, it, it's an odd state of affairs so to speak Heather that that yeah that the law is that way but who knows maybe it'll change you know anyone who's uh, listening who has a child with a special needs I just want to say that's different okay? yes I'm glad you did yes yes you I'm glad you did you can claim the dependency and say that you know we've got special needs in this circumstance this this person our, our child is not going to be able to be self-sufficient. And so this is either extended or indefinite um, on the way we settle it. And as much as I love the court I, and I became a lawyer to litigate and I do litigate, um, this is a reason why settlement is better um, because you can be super creative and set up a trust that you both contribute to or take a certain asset and designate it to help your kids through school and start their adulthood. I mean, so you can do a lot more creative things. Um, the judges really can't do because uh, they, yeah. they, they gotta follow the law, but you can think out of the box in, in negotiations. I'm glad you brought that up, Rebecca, because now, you know, I think, I guess we do get wiser as we get older and and just have more experience because the longer you do it, and I have always been a litigator we are definitely litigators in our firm. And, and for some clients, that really is the only option because it does take two to come to a settlement. But Absolutely. it's just that conversation when in particularly, and I think this ties right into what we were talking about, you know, with, with celebrities, public figures, you know, the only way you are keeping this out of the news is if you two agree, at least agree to go try to agree, right? Because- you may not know and somebody's going to have to give a little, take a little, obviously when there's a tight prenup that, that can really, you know, really keep it a shorter process, but you're going to have both to agree for the overall benefit of that celebrity, which probably um, brings income that should benefit both of you. You got to keep it um, as private as possible and yes. resolve it in order to avoid the cameras and the news reports on your trips to court and or hearings. Oh, hundred percent. And that, you know, and that's part of the reasons, you know, I, I have taken the, the more celebratory cases to obscure locations. Mm -hmm. And because it, 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 you got to talk to the chief judge, you got to do all sorts of things to make that happen. But, um, but it can. And, and, yeah. nobody wants to be in that limelight you want you want it to be as yeah. peaceful as possible it's such a personal terrible difficult thing to go through 
that, you know, last thing you want to do is see your name on the front page, um, you know, <laughs> as well. That that would just be terrible. You've got enough going on that you don't want that. So I do feel badly for those people who have gone through the process and it's been so tremendously public. You know, uh, I mean, look at something as personal as, you know, we have now in, in, in London, the, you know, princess... <laughs> everybody knows she has cancer you know mm -hmm. it's like wouldn't that be nice if that could have been private for her um you know and it, it, it can't it's all over the news um and and that's the same thing in a celebrity divorce or you know a politician's divorce or what have you personal mm -hmm. affairs become very public and when you can stop oh. that it's better to do so Absolutely. And I think that, you know, for individuals who are listening and they're like, yeah, we don't want it. You know, maybe my job, my husband's job is at a level that this could create some issues or you just are, you know, you're an athlete, you are an actress, actor, um, you know, public figure, politician. I, I think that, I mean, what would you say, Rebecca? I mean, yes, one, you talk to your spouse, but maybe go talk to an attorney to understand maybe how to talk to your spouse, maybe how to present an option of where you can each be both represented, but in a way that is what's civil and, you know, is confidential as it can be. I, I can't tell people enough how important it is who the lawyers are. Mm -hmm. You know, when I hear who the other side is, my brain goes in one direction or another in that this is going to go smoothly or this is going to be a nightmare. Mm -hmm. um, so the selection of attorneys is a, an important discussion uh, to be had <laughs> because, you know, if, if and you got to be careful because you don't want to say if your client comes in and, sit and he tells you who the opposing counsel is and you say they're a nightmare. That's going to get back to them. And then you got even more. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, you, so you got to. It's a fine line, but but a, choose your attorneys well, carefully. Um, you know, definitely look at their backgrounds and, and, and do consults. You know, when somebody comes to me and says, oh, I had 10 consults, I don't get offended. Mm -hmm. Before they hire me or what have you, I'm not offended. I'm like, I get it. I, you know, you want to make sure you make that right decision because just one little fact can make a case. Not only just who opposing counsel is, this goes to, I'm sure you get asked a lot, Heather, can I date? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, do you want to bump your ride? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because sure you can date. There's no law against dating when you're going through a divorce, but. You know, uh, even if the opposing side wants the divorce, it's amazing what emotions that can stir up. Um, so all these mm -hmm. single dynamics can change things tremendously. Agreed, agreed. And it's um, because even in a situation where, um, you know, you're, you're like, hey, let's handle this is you know confidentially as we can let's try to both be adults and mature you are still divorcing somebody that you love so emotions are um can absolutely take absolutely. over um so be careful right and um and that that's goes for both sides right as far as they treat each other but you have to look absolutely. at what is the end goal? And, you know, when you're a public figure or celebrity, the end goal is privacy. The end goal is, can we navigate this with as little backlash and publicity that will affect us? And if we have children, you know, that stuff never goes away. So let's right. keep that end goal in mind as we're navigating this process. And I can't emphasize that you're right, Heather. And I can't emphasize enough what a big deal social media has done to divorces i mean you know one picture can change the way mm -hmm. the divorce goes. you know it's like you know and i and same thing emails texts you know, make sure are you good with whatever you're writing <laughs> to be on a poster board in front of a judge <laughs> you know yeah. or in the mm -hmm. public because we are all so 
involved, not all, I mean, proud of the people who aren't, um, you know, do what I say, not as what I do, but, you know, the, people are very involved in social media, emails, texts, and it takes two seconds to type it out, but it can change everything. So, um, absolutely. You gotta be really careful. I, um, I agree. And let's talk about, you know, we, we were taught, we've talked about the, um, the celebrity divorces, some of the things and ways to navigate that. Um, you know, and when we're talking about maybe more of a complex asset case, you know, where there's more money to be divided, um, I'm just going to take, I'm just going to ask your opinion because yeah. I'll be interested to see, you know, you, you know, versus the, you know, the case of the most money or the case with very little money. Um, do you see a correlation between the amount of money and arguing, um, or disagreements in cases at all? I really don't. <laughs> um, I really don't. You know, I, 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 I think it's the dynamics of the, the, the couple, and the families, and as I call them, the shadow advisors, people that are in their ear, mm. um, you know, and telling them what to do or not do. I mean, one shadow advisor can also, like I said, one factor can change the whole thing. If you if you got somebody who has an axe to grind for whatever reason uh, against your spouse, be careful of that too because that can really cause more harm than good. The person may not be trying to cause harm. They may be trying to help you. Mm -hmm. They may have given you really bad suggestions and advice. And, you know, be careful who you listen to and act upon what their suggestions are. Um, because they could have your back 100% and mean well and uh, be giving you awful advice it makes your case blow up not purposefully <laughs> but right you know i always ask my clients who who's your shadow advisors that i don't know and who's theirs you know well i want to know both sides who, who who are who are you both relying on and listening to i think that's a very good question and because sometimes like you said they they mean well however that is misplaced or doesn't see the big picture. For example, you have a business. That business needs to stay running because it is beneficial to both of you, even if you're not both going to be running it together or owners, right? That produces a livelihood for a family. So sometimes, you know, actions that you can take out of spite or based on maybe, you know, what your, your sister, mother, brother says because of their feelings that can really hurt you down the line financially. Um, because if it hurts him, it's probably going to hurt you too. Or if it hurts the business, it's probably going to hurt both of you. If that business is marital and, you know, income producing, it's, it's necessary to keep that running. Absolutely. And I, I think you're right when you say, you know, even though you're not going to be married, you're still in it together. <laughs> You know, yes. particularly if there's kids, um, it, it's it's just important to keep that in mind. And to the simplest of things, and like I said, a picture can change things. You know, to to gossip, to who you're listening to. Um, are you taking care of yourself? You know, and if you you love you love to walk and you walked every day and you haven't walked since the war started, go for a walk. Yeah, you know, or you like movies and haven't seen one, watch a movie, whatever it may be, read a book, whatever it is that you get pleasure out of, you make sure mm -hmm. you're taking care of yourself because that'll help you think straighter too. I, um, okay, I've got to ask you this. Okay. Jeff, Jeff Gordon and his ex-wife, Brooke Seeley, have been highlighted recently because of their public and contentious divorce. And one thing they thought about, fought about, was his claiming he should get more of their assets because of his hazardous and life-threatening occupation. Now, is this a reason to seek certain or more assets? You see me smiling because I did represent Brooke um, Gordon. And oh. <laughs> yeah, and um, lovely, lovely, lovely woman. Uh, it was a hard personal time period for me because I was pregnant at the time. 
And so I had a lot going on in my personal life <laughs> as well. I, and um, it, it was very, very interesting. When I mentioned the tabloids, that was one of the cases I was thinking about when I'd stand in the line and I'd be like, oh, you guys got this right, got this wrong, you know, and you watched it. But mm -hmm. um, I had friends of mine say to me, wait, he's risking his life, you know, and mm -hmm. she should get more money while he risks his life. And I would say adamantly behind that, she's got risks too. Mm -hmm. You know, at, at the time, um, they were going to make a Barbie of her. Really? And, and the divorce made that go away. And that's public. That's not something private. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and so she got losses too, you know. <laughs> now, I know she's not a speed racer. <laughs> but, right. You know, they're, she's out there and supporting him. And and, and it's, it's a married couple. Um, yeah. So I didn't take a lot of weight. Now, maybe that's because I represented Brooke. Right. But I didn't take a lot of weight that, oh, because he is risking his life, uh -huh. he should get more. I mean, that never was a thought. I mean, that's kind of creative. I mean, it's very creative. I think it's creative, but didn't really get a chance to get any traction. Right, right. And But but people were thinking it. Let me tell you what. That one was not as private. It, I, people knew I was on that case. Mm -hmm. But people would speak freely to me got it yeah okay about <laughs> what they thought um you know and it, it, it just it was unfortunate because it, I, I i don't think that way i don't think okay yeah um because you're doing a high risk job <laughs> you know you should get more i don't i don't think that way and i um but i always appreciate an argument that i haven't heard of and i don't think the law supports that either um here yeah. in florida but uh <laughs> but it is interesting um now what um are there any cases that are the most memorable that you've had so far in your career that you you can talk about well i've touched on a couple of them uh, for sure um I'm going through my memory bank of which ones I can't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I don't want to press you because I do know that, that there's yeah, a lot that. No, it's like, it's like, as I mentioned, that international uh, relocation was really quite something. Um, that, that was just, I mean, that, that, it hadn't been really done. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you name it, the issue was involved. It was, um, have you ever seen that movie, A Beautiful Mind? Yes. Yes, I have. So I felt like I turned into him for a moment or two. I was writing things all over on big poster boards, trying to figure out what to do and come to the right answer. Um, you know, some of my cases that have been memorable, it's like that. I get so invested uh, that I want to do what's best. And um, the good news out of that is I tend to lose weight when, <laughs> when I have those big cases because <laughs> I'm so stressed out. Um, but it, 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 uh, that's memorable. Um, I mean, we're talking go down sizes because I'm stressed out trying to help people. But um, oh. yeah, yeah, it, 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 I definitely think obviously the Elon Tiger Woods time period of my life. I remember being at an Easter brunch and I had to have a phone call about the case and I had to like walk out. It was like, like I was being kind of rude, really. Right. Mm -hmm. at these people's home for an Easter brunch, but I really need to take this call. And I couldn't tell them why. Yeah. And I did lose one uh, acquaintance um, because I had to ke keep canceling lunch and I couldn't tell her why, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, so there's, there's interesting layers in those type of cases that, you can't even think about the consequences. Like I said, the first day of school, you, I couldn't tell my kids what was going on. Yeah. You know, um, it, 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 there's a lot of layers, but the, uh, those are some of the most memorable are uh, the international relocation, obviously the Elon Tiger divorce, the Brooke Gordon divorce, um, among others. And uh, sometimes they aren't the big ones that are the most memorable. But, yes, right. That's you know, true. It, 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 something's happened, and oh, I, 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 I got an example. 
Uh, I represented this woman who I met because our, our kids were in a, a dance class together. Mm-hmm. And um, this is this is the yin and yang of doing divorce work. And got through her divorce. It was hard. Uh, our kids remained friends during the time. But afterwards, I waited a year and I asked for she and I and our kids to go to lunch. Mm-hmm. which we did and sitting at lunch it hit me like a lightning bolt this is memorable Heather for me um I thought of a friend that she should meet <laughs> no way and I said I got just the guy you need to meet happy to say after I said that at lunch three years later I was doing their wedding down in the West so that was pretty memorable so not everything we do you know is is destructive so to speak are breaking people apart. You know, I think we we have a job too to try to think of the the, the bigger family picture and how to help everybody move forward. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we are almost out of time. I I thank you so much for uh, revisiting our show. And um, lastly, I I do like to ask everybody on the show. Um, before we go, if you can impart on our listeners what you've learned about divorce and representing women throughout your career. Certainly. Um, what first came to my mind when you asked that question was, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> you know, is, uh, you know, it, it can seem so de- devastating and awful. And nobody says and this 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 used to bother me when clients said this, but it's true. Nobody walks down the aisle thinking I'm going to get a divorce. <laughs> you know, that's you got a different dream in your head of what it's going to be like, and suddenly it's not. That's why I say I would tell the listeners and tell my clients there is a light at the end of the tunnel. I don't know what that's going to look like. I don't know how bright it's going to be. Uh, it may be dim at first, <laughs> but you you got to. N- it's not life ending. It's, you know, don't, don't be afraid of change. Be afraid of not changing. If you've come to the conclusion or your spouse come to the conclusion that you need a divorce. Okay. What's next. Mm-hmm. That's great. I appreciate that so much. Now, lastly, Rebecca, where can our listeners find you for more information and resources? Absolutely. So I'm in the heart of downtown Orlando, um, I have a website. I'm on every kind of social media from, even though I said, be careful with social media. That's why I said, do as I say, not as I do. You know, I, I'm on Facebook. Uh, if you look up Rebecca L. Palmer law group, uh, dot com, you can see all those different resources on Insta. Um, I'm even on, I guess it's called X now. <laughs> <laughs> So well, perfect. Wonderful. Platforms. Thank you so much, Heather, for your time and energy and how you're helping people out through this process. Well, thank you. Um, we have reached the end of our show. Uh, Rebecca Palmer, it's been um, quite a pleasure discussing with you today. Um, celebrity divorce and high net worth divorce. Um, listeners, if you or someone you know is going through divorce or is thinking about a divorce, please reach out to us at floridawomenslawgroup.com. Or join our Facebook group, Women Winning Divorce. We will have the links uh, in the episode description, as well as all the information in which to get in touch with Rebecca Palmer. Uh, Thank you all for listening. Rebecca, thank you again for joining us today. Thank you so much. You take care. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Women Winning Divorce. My goal is to elevate your life and the way you are thinking so that you are best equipped to win at life. If you enjoy the show, Please subscribe so you automatically get my new shows every week. And I would love to hear from you personally. Come join the conversation on social and join our Facebook group, Women Winning Divorce. We welcome your comments and suggestions. We want to bring you content that helps move your life forward. Women Winning Divorce is the place for an elevated conversation on how women can thrive during times of adversity in order to live their best life.